Hello, this is CJ Radoon of rotowire.com here on the Prime Sports Network for your Formula One update. <laughs> Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any motorsports videos all season long, including NASCAR, IndyCar, and of course, Formula One. You can access my columns by clicking the link provided in the description video, uh, description of the video. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to let me know what is on your mind. So this week, we have a very exciting race, the Formula One Pirelli Grand Prix of Italy. It is one of the favorite races of every single season. Uh, we're coming up on it this week, so very exciting stuff. But what happened last week? We were in Holland, which was Max Verstappen's home track, and... Yet again, as predicted, it was a Max Verstappen blowout. So he dominated his home race at Zandvoort. That was totally expected. Uh, he led 61 of 72 laps. The only reason I suspect that it was 61 out of 72 laps is really the fact that it was the weather. We had a wet and dry race weekend. It disrupted qualifying. It disrupted the race. And the race even had a red flag for standing water for less than, with less than 10 laps uh, going to the finish. But at the end of the day, Max Verstappen at his home track in his home country, just too much to overcome, no matter what the weather was able to throw at him. He was still the best man on track with the fastest car. So what about the second fastest car? It should be the other Red Bull and teammate of, of Max Verstappen's uh, Sergio Perez. He did his job. He actually did his job for the second race in a row as a Red Bull driver, uh, as being that second best driver through the weekend. As I've said before, he should absolutely no question be racking up second place finishes all season and just blowing away the rest of the field for that second position in the championship. The only reason I suspect that he didn't get uh, a podium finish this year as Zanvert was a, a pit penalty. So he was making, he, he jumped into the pits just before that final red stop when the weather really got bad. Uh, unfortunately, he had a speeding penalty and that ended up getting, adding a time penalty to his total. So he ended up dropping back and ultimately finished fourth. But nonetheless, despite that penalty, it was still a decent weekend from Sergio Perez. And I would expect him this week at Monza, barring any mistakes, to be that second man in, in the race as well. So Fernando Alonso in the Aston Martin, he was absolutely there to pick up the pieces and he brought home another Aston Martin podium finish with Pierre Gasly back on the podium as well for Alpine. So Fernando Alonso, he even said after the race, he was thinking of making a lunge at uh, Max Verstappen, which would have been, you know, the only way that Max Verstappen probably would have lost that race. But uh, Fernando Alonso, the veteran champion that he is, uh, thought better of it and consolidated his uh, spot on the podium. So interesting stuff to watch there. These end of the race restarts can throw a wrench into what you expect, but nonetheless, Max Verstappen and that Red Bull continue to be dominant. So it was very much a unique weekend at Zandvoort. It jumbled the starting order and that flowed right through to the race. But in the end, as I said, Max Verstappen, dominant driver. And a lot of results came down in that race to being at the right place at the right time or making the right decision before anyone else. And again, you know, even with the speed, that team, that Red Bull team and Max Verstappen, even when questions uh, arise during the race from, from Verstappen or maybe even from the pit wall as to whether or not they're making the right decision, their speed and their pace typically take them above everyone else anyway. So leads me to the biggest surprise of that weekend, Alex Albin. He did a fantastic job. Uh, that Williams, man, it's a powerful car. They flexed their muscle again. Albin qualified fourth and finished eighth, uh, which is great news for them in Italy. And it's all about speed in Italy. In, in Italy. And we know that that Williams is fast. So what is Albon going to be able to do when we get to, to Monza this weekend? And that is what's happening this week, the Italian Grand Prix at Monza. So let's go ahead and put those odds up on the screen for you. Uh, no surprises, certainly. that We've got Max Verstappen uh, as the runaway favorite, Sergio Perez, second favorite, uh, probably more of a podium finish for him. And then we've also shown you Lewis Hamilton and for Fernando Alonso up there as well. But first, let's talk about Monza. Man, what a great track. It's been around since the 30s in Formula One history. There have been 77 prior Formula One races at Monza and by far one of the most historic tracks on the calendar and arguably one of the most exciting it is without a doubt the home of Ferrari and its famous Tifosi. It is the fastest track on the schedule. Its long straights require minimal downforce and there are just a few chicanes in place to slow those cars down. Uh, so the cars with the fastest top end speed, those are gonna be the ones that have an advantage here. And we all know that Red Bull tops that list, but that Williams catching up very quickly. 
So the long right hand parabolica is probably the quintessential turn on that track. It's uh, effectively a double apex or a wide apex right hand turn. It's really important for drivers to get that one right. It's high speed. Uh, they hit the co hit the apex early in the corner, kind of drift out to the back and onto the outside as they head up to that front straight. And it's imperative that they nail that one right because they are trying to maximize their speed into the pretty much the only passing zone on the track, which is that turn one chicane. After all that high speed, they are fully on those brakes and they come down to one of the slowest turns in Formula One, which is that turn one chicane. And that's a site where a lot of trouble can often happen, especially at the start. But throughout the race, if you can get a DRS train going, catch up on somebody, that's the place where you're likely gonna be able to make your pass. So how about the drivers in the cars? What are the topics for this weekend? Well. Verstappen and Red Bull have, have been dominant. We know that. <laughs> so what is there in addition to Max Verstappen and Red Bull that we can look at? Well, Ferrari. So we were wondering how they would do last week at Zandvoort. Uh, they actually struggled at Zandvoort. So their 2023 season continues to be a challenge. Where are they going to be at their home track? I would personally think that they're going to be better. Um, so I would expect actually Ferrari to be in with a shot at the podium. Certainly not the win. We know that their big struggle happens to come during the race and their ability to, to work their tires uh, throughout the race. But I think at Italy, they're going to pull out all the stops because it is their home race. What's going to be interesting from this aspect, though, is depending upon how far behind they are at Monza, that might give us an indication as to when they're going to give up on developing their 2023 car and just start focusing on 2024. So look out for Ferrari this weekend, see if they can get some kind of boost uh, if they are bad. This weekend at their home track, I would expect them just to shut off 2023 and start focusing on 2024 even earlier than expected. So secondly, I mentioned it a couple times, but Williams has a fast car. Does Monza in this high-speed track give Alex Albon a chance to sneak in a podium finish? That car's straight line speed, it's among the best. He should definitely be considered to outperform here. It's going to be interesting to watch him through qualifying. He was able to make it into Q3 qualifying at Zandvoort. I would think that with the Williams pace that he'd be able to do the same at Monza. And if he starts out front, that car is going to be extremely difficult to pass because it is going to be so fast down the straights that there aren't going to be many that are going to be able to, to get by it. So a sneaky long shot this week certainly has to go to Alex Albon and the Williams. So how about a third topic? How about the battle for third <laughs> this weekend? It, it could be a throw up. I mean, if you throw Alex Albon and the Williams into that fight, who's going to have the fastest car at, Mar at, at Monza? Is it going to be Aston Martin, Fernando Alonso? Is it going to be McLaren, Lando Norris? Is it going to be Mercedes, Lewis Hamilton, and George Russell? Or could it be Albon and the Williams? That's going to be arguably the most entertaining thing to watch this Monza race weekend. Uh, if any of them, I'm probably going to put the Williams at top, Ferrari maybe equal there, um, but then McLaren, um, I'm sorry, Aston Martin and Mercedes probably have a shot as well. At the bottom of that heap, I'm going to go a little bit controversial, and I'm going to say McLaren. So if you remember McLaren back at Spa prior to the three-week break, that was a high-speed track, and where did they struggle? Top-end speed. So I wouldn't expect McLaren to be all that great. They did bring a new rear wing, so we'll have to pay attention to that this weekend to see if that cures their high-speed ailments, but I would keep them on the back burner until you're able to see how much of a difference that upgrade actually ma makes. So for this weekend, Monza, Max, obviously the favorite. He's going to be your top choice. Keep going with him until anything changes. And this weekend, he's also going for the all-time record of 10 consecutive race wins. Never been done before, so a little bit of pressure on his shoulders. However, Red Bull is the fastest car. Uh, so at Monza, the fastest track on, on the schedule, he should be able to get it done. So in short, I would expect another Red Bull 1-2 finish with Sergio Perez in second for a sneaky long shot, I would say Williams. Uh, but if you want a more middle of the road type of long shot, probably go with Charles Leclerc and Ferrari at their home track because they are going to be pulling out all of the stops in order to make sure that they get at least one car on the podium at their home race. So with that, I bid you adieu for this week. Enjoy the Italian Grand Prix at Monza. It's one of my favorites every season. After this, we'll rejoin in two weeks, I think, for Singapore, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so again, I am CJ Radun of rotowire.com for the Prime Sports Network. 
Remember to subscribe so you don't miss any of the motorsports videos all season long. And that includes NASCAR, IndyCar, and of course, Formula One. And you can access my columns through the link provided in the description area of the video. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to let me know what's on your mind. And until next time, keep it out of the fence.